You look a little worse for wear, my friend. You must be on quite the journey. I should eat something if I were you. A full belly can do wonders for your spirits. Once you're in good health, we'll speak properly. There, you look better already. Maybe even strong enough to reach the Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Don't look so surprised. These days they call me the Pirate Lord. But back when I discovered this place, I was just a bold explorer like you. I dreamt of finding uncharted waters filled with treasures and rife with danger, where every sunrise brought a new adventure. You've been brave to make it this far. Not many do. Now you've one last crossing to make. You'll want some trusty steel at your side, though. There's a sword in those trees whose owner doesn't seem to need it anymore. There's far more to being a pirate than a blade in your hand and a love of other people's money. It's about finding your way through ancient caverns by lamplight, digging up long-lost treasures, and raising a frothing great tankard of grog when you live to tell the tale. For all that, you'll need the right equipment. You can start by taking this old shovel. I stowed a few belongings around here back in the day. The map will show you the way. A new landmark. This stricken ship certainly wasn't here during my last visit. There's no sign of her crew, so perhaps they fell overboard and met their end. Things are very different on the Sea of Thieves, thanks in no small part to my own adventures, I must confess. We have an arrangement with the merfolk who live deep under the waves. Should any pirate become lost at sea, stranded, they'll help them back to their ship. If you should find yourself flung overboard, traveller, look for the merfolk's beacon before the sharks get your scent. You'll be glad you did. She still hides her secrets. A fine weapon. She'll serve you well out there. You look like a true pirate. There's plenty more to see, so why not stretch your legs and explore? I'll be here when you're ready to leave.
Not all my journeys to this island are happy ones. Today I stumbled onto this poor soul, map still in their hands, to think they were so close. No matter how swiftly we sail or how sharp our aim, it is only a matter of time before the reaper's hand clamps down upon our shoulder. I am fortunate to have had a friend with wisdom enough to know this. Thanks to her, I live on beyond my years, at least in spirit. For younger pirates, another hope presents itself. When they perish, their souls are saved from drifting alone through the Sea of the Damned. If you should die on the Sea of Thieves and find yourself in this ferryman's company, know this, he deserves your respect, for he has made the greatest sacrifice of all. The Sea of Thieves, that's what they're calling it nowadays. The genie is out of the bottle, and more pirates are finding their way there every day. Some are looking to hide from their enemies, from their pasts, from the Grand Maritime Union, while others have heard the call to adventure. It's only a matter of time before they reach this island, too. Maybe they'll be dreaming about what the Sea of Thieves has to offer, just as I was. If that's the shape of things to come, I'd be a fool to complain. Instead, I'll stow a few supplies around the place for those who need them. Things work differently beyond the Shroud. Better for the most part, but newcomers will have to think on their feet if they're to survive. Blast it all! The key to my ship's hold is missing. It must have slipped from my pocket at some point in my time here. Between this and that business with Rathbone, I'm developing a bad habit of losing the keys to my belongings. Perhaps it's made its bid for freedom from my jacket when I climbed up for a drink of fresh spring water. It's another lost treasure now. You've really done it this time, Ramsey. It's one thing to return to your favourite island and quite another to wreck your ship at the heart of it. I was bound to get Kayla sooner or later. This place has been my little secret for so long now. I couldn't wait to get back here. To dream. I'm so close to the shroud, I feel like I could reach out and touch it. I'm not ready to support a hook for a hand though. Not yet, anyway. What lies on the other side? Piles of glittering gems? Huge leviathans the size of galleons? Even better, might there be a future for pirates like me. Next time, things will be different. I'll visit Magpie, the shipwright, and buy a new vessel. Take my time, find a crew. We shall sail together. If you're reading this, you've broken into my strongbox, which makes you a worthy pirate indeed, worthy enough to hear my plan. Transforming this old stomping ground of mine into a safe heaven for travellers has sparked something deep within my soul. It is the flame of an idea, a great tavern, far more magnificent than the usual pubs and alehouses, known only to truly legendary pirates. A den that sold only the finest plunder, where hardened adventurers and cunning sea dogs could meet to swap stories of gold and glory. If you make it to the Sea of Thieves, and you should your heart desire a real challenge, heed my words. Seek Athena's fortune. I shall be waiting.
Once, long ago, I was standing atop these cliffs and staring out to sea, quite lost in my own thoughts. Suddenly, there was an almighty crashing sound. It was a kraken, and one of the largest I'd seen for quite some years. I was so startled I couldn't help but take a leap backwards in surprise. Once I'd picked myself up, battered and bloody, I decided to install this ladder in case any future visitors took a tumble in the same way. Nowadays, thanks to that fool Merrick, Krakens aren't the only sea monsters to watch for. Megalodons are once more roaming freely beneath the waves. They can prove quite the challenge even for experienced pirates. Why, I once battled a monstrous pale-skinned beast at... Well, I'll save that tale for another time. Of all the unsolved mysteries that haunt my dreams, none are more tantalizing than the long-lost people known to pirates as the Ancients. Their legacy can be felt all across the Sea of Thieves, from ruins that lurk under deep waters to cliff-top paintings that shame my humbler efforts. They clearly had a great wealth of knowledge and mastered many curses and other arcane powers, and yet something drove them to leave. Maybe some great war or calamity struck their civilization? Perhaps it was simply time for them to move on. The truth, as it always has, eludes us all. Even with all the wonders I've experienced, it's the simple things in life that remain the most enjoyable. Tonight, that's a hot meal roasted over a roaring fire. Fresh fruit's all well and good, but if you take the time to properly prepare a meal, you'll feel all the better for it. The trick is to keep an eye on the dish and serve it up when it's perfectly cooked. No amount of grog can wash away the taste of burnt food. With care and a bit of practice, even a humble splash tail can keep a pirate in good health with a full belly. At least they're good for something. We've all seen what happens when huge armadas try to make it through the Devil's Shroud, and it's not pretty. Screaming sailors and splintered ships. I learned long ago that smaller crews have a better chance of making it along the twisting routes that provide safe passage to the Sea of Thieves. A lone traveller is best served by a sloop. They're small and nimble, though their size comes at the expense of firepower. Larger crews must learn to sail a brigantine, or even the mighty galleon a commanding sight with their eight cannons and three great sails. Then, of course, we have the humble rowboat. These tiny craft can be carried by the other larger ships and are perfect for retaining the element of surprise.
know now. I say you're as ready as you'll ever be for what's ahead. Allow me to show you the path. is beginning to part, but you have one more task before your journey continues. You may be ready to sail, but your ship still needs repairs. Go and tend to her wounds.
You do well to heed my warning, for this is no ordinary voyage you're contemplating. Few pirates have even heard of the shores of gold, let alone seen them with their own eyes. They say it's an island riddled with untold riches, ancient secrets, hidden tombs, and deadly traps. But you won't find it on any map, for it was swallowed up by the mists of the Devil's Shroud. This book is the journal of the pirate lord himself. It tells of his first ship, the Magpie's Wing, and the journey he took to find the mythical Shroudbreaker. The only way to part the fog and reach the shores of gold. If you dare to follow in the footsteps of the greatest pirate who ever lived, then take the journal and use it to find the wreck of the Magpie's Wing. It holds clues to the Shroudbreaker's whereabouts. Bring it to me, and I'll set you on your way to the shores of gold. But don't be fooled. Only the bravest, strongest pirates will make it back alive. I wish you luck. You're going to need it. <laughs> Journal of the Pirate Lord. Voyage for the Shroudbreaker. Ninth Summer on the Sea of Thieves. Chasing Legends. Another journey, another journal. The Shores of Gold. A great secret. An island of treasures swallowed by the Devil Shroud. A lead. Ancients could reach new islands through the mists. Parts of the Shroud. Pathfinder. Wayfarer. Shroudbreaker. I will scour the Sea of Thieves and learn more. Artifacts of the Ancients, found after days of scouring islands. Very old chest, still good as new, totem inside. Animal totem, more than a statue, a key. The key to the Shroudbreaker, sail to the secret places, use totem, take Shroudbreaker, drink, shores of gold, drink. Ambush, the burning blade Kempheris, we are no match for her infernal cannons. I made my choice, into the sea went the chest. The ship's log will help us find it again. No one else shall take it, we will lure them away from it. They caught us in the shallows of an uncharted isle, right between the islands of Crooked Masts and Old Crook's Hollow. My beloved magpie's wing was lost, and with her my dreams of the shores of gold. The wreck now lies at that uncharted isle, somewhere between these two islands. The ship's log sank with the ship. Without it we can't reclaim the chest. Another may yet claim the Shroudbreaker. Finally, a balmy day, and a chance to document my research before it all spills out of my head and overboard. Ramsey has been thinking again, and that usually means I'm the one due for a headache. He called for me late last night. Mercier, how might we stay safe in the Devil's Shroud? I just stared at him. We all know how dangerous that fog is. It surrounds the Sea of Thieves, but it ebbs and flows. Sometimes it swallows whole islands for months or even years at a time. Sail into that mist and you'll start to choke. The deck beneath your feet will splinter. The shroud feasts on ships and sailors alike. Being me, of course, I told Ramsey I'd find a way. I left my notes tucked away at Ancient Spire. I'll see what I can learn. Did you ever walk into a room thinking about something so hard you couldn't see it right in front of you? The truth is like that sometimes. While filling my tank at below deck, I happened to glance down at the map table. Ancient Spire and the Ancient Isles. The truth. I've asked to set course for Devil's Ridge nearby. If I'm right, the key to breaching the Shroud has been in front of me all along. 
We like to think of ourselves as being the first to find a way of reaching the Sea of Thieves, but that isn't the truth, not one bit. The first ones, the lost tribes, the ancients, whatever you call them, they lived here in what we now know as the Sea of Thieves. Signs of their civilization can be found all over the place, even on islands that were once claimed by the Devil Shroud. They built temples, altars, places that were important to them. They couldn't simply pack up and leave when the fog drew in. I'll need to cross-reference some of my oldest notes stashed away back at Thieves Haven, our first hideout. How nostalgic. It exists. Proof lies in some of the most obscure places. Ramsey won't let me write down where, but the relic's real enough. As near as I can tell, they use the artifact like a beacon to protect their homes and places of worship from the Shroud's effects. At other times, it was taken to a vault to recover its powers. When I told Ramsey, he replied, Ah, so it's a Shroud Breaker then. All of this seems to have inspired him. We're making for Plunder Outpost on Ramsey's orders, to see a man about a map. Well, this escalated quickly. Ramsey remembered the drunken ramblings of some old salt who'd sailed too close to the Devil's Shroud. The old man claimed he'd glimpsed a glittering island, one where the very ground was made of gems and precious metals. It sounds impossible, but as Ramsey likes to say, that's just another way of describing something we haven't seen yet. At first light, we'll be setting out to find that Shroudbreaker. If these shores of gold are real, it's the only way we'll reach them. I should get to my bunk and try for sleep. From now on, Ramsey's Voyage Journal can tell our story. Magpie's Wing Ship's Log At anchoring down on the south side of Discovery Ridge, Captain's gone ashore. The Burning Blade. We are fleeing to the southeast. They are turning to pursue. Past small shallow isles to starboard. Heading east by northeast. Passing a fortified island. Now headed northeast. Dumping the chest in the waters southwest of a cluster of islands ahead. Heading east. The burning blade is gaining. They will soon catch us. Are these islands? The cave scarab hides near the island's tears. Shroudbreaker.
great Ramsey's ghost. I heard all the stories, but to actually hold the Shroud Breaker in my hands, I never thought I'd see the day. Something's wrong. There should be four jewels set in the base that grant the Shroud Breaker its power, but they've been removed. Without them, you won't last five minutes in that fog. Now let me think. I did hear tell that Captain Briggsy made it to the Shores of Gold. If that's true, she might know the whereabouts of these missing stones. Not that she'd ever say. Sometimes, even the best pirates fall victim to their greed or hatred, and it changes them, strips the flesh from their bones, gives them power, but twists them up inside. Briggsy is one such abomination. People call them skeleton lords, and most pirates flee at their approach. Not even the Order of Souls dares challenge them, and rightly so. But you, you are going to have to hunt one down. I have eyes and ears across the Sea of Thieves. If you gather any of the missing pieces, I'll see they're restored to the Shroudbreaker on your behalf. For now, head to Plunder Outpost and speak with Madame Olivia about Briggsy's whereabouts. Remember, skeleton lords are not to be taken lightly. Olivia of the Order of Souls, and your arrival was foretold to me, as was your quest to seek out and destroy the abomination once known as Briggsy. As you may know, the Order offers bounties for the skulls of those undead wretches that roam the Sea of Thieves. Yet even I am not permitted to send pirates in pursuit of a skeleton lord. For that would be sending them to oblivion. In life, Briggsy was a flamboyant adventurer who thrived on danger and excitement. How could she not seek out the fabled shores of gold? But now, she has been consumed by evil's thrall, and is a fearsome foe to all she encounters. And yet, if the whispers on the wind are true, have already claimed the Shroud Breaker. Perhaps there is a chance you might prevail. Very well. These papers hold fragments of memories from those who pledge allegiance to the Skeleton Lord. If you can decipher their meanings, they may lead you to artifacts, relics of Briggsy's life. Bring all that you find to me, and I will shine a light into the darkness that awaits you. Go now. I must prepare the ritual ready for your return. Bounty Hunter, this book will guide you towards a pair of ancient relics belonging to Briggsy. Defeat those who protect these relics and bring them to me, Madame Olivia. Chronicle of Forgotten Lives, as transcribed by Madame Olivia, private property of the Order of Souls. Within these pages, I shall be demonstrating how best to transcribe the memories we obtain from Bounty Skulls, as an example to the Order's newest members. Remember, while the recollections themselves may be confused, it is vital that the information we divine from them is accurate. The Order of Souls thrives upon its reputation. The memories of Captain Mara, the skeletal alliance of the Hellbound Dove. Her treasures are buried and we have her key. We sail away to find an island where it can hide safely. Where? Where do we hide it? Keep searching, keep looking. In the northern ancient isles is a good place to keep it. 
all about the island we go, whereabouts to stay. Do we carry in a cave or stay up high out of the way? We camp atop the center aisle, settle down to protect the key, but then shouts, bangs, the living. Here for us, Mara will fight. I will die for her because she wishes it. Crack, my skull returns to wet sand. The memories of Blackheart Bill, the skeletal alliance of the Hellbound Dove. We sail with her special chest in the southern ancient isles. We looks for an island to keep it, looks for a big one that could hide it. Then we find it, we take the chest and we row, row hard till we hear the grinding of the sand. Find a place to bury the chest, I sent along with the others, stuck with scary scaly goldtooth who likes to bully poor Bill. Walking in line like snake we be, poor Bill bullied all the way. Ow! Another stone at old Bill. Finally he finds it. Finds a place for the chest to rest. No rest for poor Bill. No, he makes old Bill bury it. Finally gets to rest his shovel. Misses old Captain Marrow. Here the others come again. Come to torment poor Bill. They call out. Billy's weak. Stupid. Hit old Bill. Bill's skull. All he is and knows. Rolls down the sand. Lost. Maybe Blackheart Bill again. One day. Anyway, uh, I went to school 
Those bricks, these precious, precious. Let me see. Ah, the tools of an adventurer. I spend so much of my time surrounded by bones. It is sometimes easy to forget that they were once people, too. Tell no one what you are about to witness. There are some secrets that even we, the Order of Souls, are forbidden to share. By recall's light and wisdom's might, the past shall point towards the future. Behold the true power of the Order of Souls. There are few left with the knowledge to create an artifact with such potential. will point the way to Briggsy, no matter where upon the Sea of Thieves she may be lurking. Once again, I implore you to be cautious. Death has only made her more formidable. Should you triumph, return to me with the skull of your enemy. In exchange for such a valuable prize, I will do all that I can to help you onwards in your journey.
three flagons of brandy and a fine meal claim the last of my coin. Fortunately, I already have a new bounty in my sights. The simpering woman in her tent at first refused to hand the wretched paper over. Too dangerous, she said. What rot! I might well have turned my blade upon her, but for my cardinal rule. I never kill for free. The paper is mine now, regardless. And who is this Briggsy? A capering child, it seems, a pirate more concerned with showing off than amassing any great fortune. She is known to make camp at Discovery Ridge. Doubtless I shall catch her there at play. You'll see how long her humour lasts. If there's one thing pirates love more than their rum bottles, it's making up ridiculous names for their pitiful flights of fancy. They insisted that Briggsy, my quarry, has been transformed into a skeleton lord with others at her beck and call. Do they really expect to scare me with this revelation? Whether or not they can walk and talk, bones can be broken just the same. It makes me all the more eager to hunt the rat down and put her in her place. Perhaps we'll finally meet at Kraken's Fall. I reached another of Briggs's nests to find it empty, or so I thought at first. That was when I heard the cries for help. His shouting led me to a scrawny little man, whose head fell somewhere short of my shoulder, kneeling from inside a barrel. Having climbed inside when Briggsy and her crew arrived, he had spent the night cowering in his keg, only to find the lid stuck fast. I released him in exchange for what little coin he had, and he was only too happy to reveal Briggsy's heading. Wonder is refuge. Too late once again, but by a matter of minutes, the ashes of her campfire were still smouldering, her prints fresh. If the wind remains fair, I'll make it to Crook's Hollow in time to introduce myself, and we'll see how brave Briggsy really is. Her crew deserve no such consideration. I'll smash them before they even know I'm there. A fair fight for hunter and prey. A smart mouth skull will fetch a handsome price, that is, if I don't decide to keep it as a trophy for myself instead. To think when I began my hunt at Sharkbait Curve that it would end this way. Beaten and humiliated, my weapons tossed aside. I struggled and spat as her bony fingers knotted my ropes together, binding me. Each threat I uttered only made her laugh harder. And yet, she was glorious. I cannot deny it. With every shot she dodged, each blow parried, I realized they had finally met my match. I refused to board the ferry. I cannot bear to return in shame to see the faces of those who know me twisted into mocking sneers. Death it is, then, a new kind of journey, and perhaps new bounties. Maybe the Reaper himself needs an apprentice. Once more, I'll be able to smell the sea air 
feel the weight of coins in my palm. Taste the bottom of a barrel of grog. There wasn't a pirate alive who didn't cheer when they heard the name Briggsy, Kraken Slayer, Shroud Breaker, and Adventurer Extraordinaire. Now look at me. Camped out in some nameless backwater with just you brainless boneheads for company. It's all because of that damned curse. Even my old shipmates think I'm dead, or that I'm some sort of monster. And maybe I am. Once I'm free of it, everyone will know my name again. Not bad for a fresh face of evil. Now stand still and die! Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Not bad for a fresh face of evil. Now stand still and die! waited years for this moment. So few people stop to wonder what the Order of Souls does with the bounties once we have them. Each skull holds many secrets. Memories of old halls and old encounters long forgotten. If Briggsy truly did possess the Shroud Breaker, the missing pieces should lie somewhere within her recollection. But be warned, such visions are not always easy to interpret. But I can make out a few names. Tasha, a girl in a tavern, staring in awe as the firelight flickers and great tales are told. Suds, a dear friend who threads his way across the wildest oceans by the light of the stars. Salty, trembling before a blade, revealing the lair of a trickster. 
wild rose. True love shining like a beacon that calls across the waves. Fate has bound you to meet with these wanderers, for they alone know of the precious stones you seek. I can offer you nothing more than my gratitude, and faith that you have the strength to reach the shores of gold. Farewell. into Briggsy. About time someone took care of that rotten bag of bones. She used to drink here, in my tavern. When she was alive, I mean. I always looked forward to those nights she arrived, all gold and glamour. I was just a girl then, of course. She used to tell such stories, all about where she'd been and the adventures she'd had. I'd write them all down, add pictures, and dream that I was sailing to those places too. Dad told me not to listen. Nor truth ever roared off a pirate's tongue, he'd say. But kids have to believe in something, don't they? You need heroes to help you grow up. But in the end, I realized two things. Briggsy was a liar, and she was gone. Worse than gone, she'd become another rotten skelly lord plundering and scaring decent folks. Hey, take my book if you think it'll help. <laughs> I just wish there was more to it than a bunch of made-up stories. Still, if it does lead you anywhere interesting, come back and tell me about it. I want some real adventures to write about. This book belongs to Tasha. I am four and a half years old and my best friend is Briggsy. When I am older I will be a pirate princess just like her. She even says I can wear her magic crown.
started keeping a diary again. It doesn't beat telling my tales in a busy tavern, but it'll do for now. Besides, it's time for another adventure. The yearning's back, deep in my belly. Time to sail again. Lucky me, overhearing the girl with the merfolk earrings. A stride breaker? Sounds like fun. If what she said is true, I should take a scout around Mermaid's Hideaway. Just in case. As I hoped, the pirate I overheard stashed a map to the Shroudbreaker here. I'm sure she won't mind me borrowing it. All those new places beyond the Shroud. I can't wait to make my mark on them, so everyone knows I got there first. It's so stormy though. I stashed some victuals in the deck at Old Salt of Toddle, so I'll hole up there for tonight. Then tomorrow I'm off to claim my prize. I just need to work out how to open the vault. This place reeks worse than the drinking ten where I tell my stories, but at least it's warm and dry. It'll do. I can't wait to see that little girl's face when I tell her Briggsy made it to the shores of gold. Not sure I can risk bringing Suds along. He means well, but it's a long voyage and he's not exactly nimble. I hope he'll understand. Well, the storm's easing off. Time to snatch myself a shroud breaker. They say you should be careful what you wish for. The greatest voyage of my life, and this is how it ends. The Burnheads don't attack me now. They just stand and stare, like they're expecting... what? Orders? From me? I can feel a darkness in my heart. I want to lash out, like I did to that naughty man at Galleon's grave. I am so, so glad that girl can't see me like this. I don't want her to hear this story. My last story. I don't want her to know I'm a monster. Kareen, my love, I hope you never read this. Today I made the worst mistake of my life. I was such an idiot. I recognized her livery on the horizon and thought I'd pick a fight with the famous Briggsy. It wasn't her. Well, it was, but cursed. Her flesh mostly rotted away, and so fierce, like a wild animal. She didn't kill me, only threw me in a cage. She said starving my way onto the ferry would teach me a lesson. I'm so hungry, and this is so cruel. I don't know what Briggsy is now, Kareen. I just know she isn't human anymore.
one from Briggsy's stories. Oh, I can't believe it. She was telling the truth after all. It is even more beautiful than I dreamed it would be. I guess Briggsy really was a great adventurer before the curse. And you know, maybe it doesn't matter if everything she said was true. The dreams she left me were real. And those are what matter most. I miss those dreams. The world wants us to grow up so fast, but being able to see every day like it's an adventure, we only learn that when we're young. I reckon that's something worth holding on to. You know what? There are still a few pages left. Space enough for me to add stories of my own. This tavern was Dad's dream, not mine. I'm gonna do it. Raise some coin, find a sloop, and live my own adventures, just like you and Briggsy. I'll clean up the relic you found and pass it on to your mysterious friend. Maybe next time we meet, we'll be out there on the Sea of Thieves. <coughs> Suds they do. They're his best friends and they keep their secrets. <laughs> Make no mistake, Captain Briggsy was the smartest pirate on the seas, and Suds was the only one she trusted to read the stars. <laughs> the only one to have a spyglass as special as hers. And a great warrior should be in a pulse with the serpent soon, I see. <sighs> so now you're Seeking the stones, trying to part the fog, and following the captain's footsteps. <laughs> Take these paper suds made. Better find that special spyglass too, eh? The captain hid it when she left suds behind, and now it can't see the stars. Use it to take a peek at suds' friends. If you're worthy of the captain's treasure, they'll show you where to sail. Be sure to bring them papers back to me, though. The not for keeps is, my dear queen, all that chromospheric volatility, so unbecoming. Are you still here? Mm. No correlation with Lani again. This the North Star. I can see the island where we left it, hidden out of sight. My Captain Briggsy buried it there, right near a solitary hanging lantern. I do miss it. Sail with me? I shook my head. No shores of gold could shine like my friends in the sky.
Suds met a young whippersnapper today. Green as leaves he was. He hadn't even heard of the North Star. You don't need no spyglass to find her, Suds told the lad. She's the biggest and brightest friend and she likes to stay put. Spot the North Star and you'll never need a compass again. And the boy smiled and asked Suds, What if it's raining? Suds gave the lad a thick ear. Busy, too busy for foolish questions. Gots to reach old plunder by nightfall. Brave little glimmerfish. He used to swim down here in the water with all of his brothers and sisters shining in the sun. Sometimes it's not wise to shine too brightly. Bigger fish came with empty bellies, and their teeth went snickersnack. Soon glimmerfish was the only one left to guide the ancient ones on their journey here. One brave little light, all alone. The ancients felt sorry for glimmerfish and placed him in the heavens where he could swim in safety. Lucky little fishy. Now suds must swim along too all the way to the shores named after the sneaky snake. Snake has many voices and likes to play tricks. He coiled along a branch and waited until the great warrior was near. Help me, came the Sea Queen's cry. Won't someone help me, for Wicked One-Eye has me by the tail. Warrior heard it all. Warrior ran through the trees, not looking up above his head. And whump! There came the singing snake to coil around his throat. Snake is cunning, but warrior is strong. He grabbed at snake and held him up into the stars, where he has lived ever since. Suds can't get a good view from here. He needs to sail out to Old Harry's place before daybreak. There was once a great battle that shook the whole heavens and caused great sadness to Suds' friends above. Great Warrior knew that he would have to battle Old Kraken, for she planned to feast on the merfolk and their kin. To fletch the arrows he would need, Warrior told Proud Eagle to give up eight of his feathers, or they would go to war. Eagle refused, of course, and tore at Warrior with his sharp talons, but it was no use. Warrior fled with his golden prizes. He dropped one feather as he fell back to earth, and it still in the stars. Suds wants to see it from the moon-shaped tile. Great Warrior took his arrows and went to make war with Kraken, but he had lost a feather along the way. He thought of singing Snake and the venom it used to bite, and he tipped each of his arrows with the very same. The arrows stung the old mother and made her sleepy, so that she sank down to the seabed. Warrior gave out a great cry. The ancients came then with their great chains. Together they bound Kraken rightly to the stars above, far out of reach. The Sea Queen was grateful, for her people were saved and she promised they would always help those lost at sea. They were voyagers. Large island with stone bird. Plunder Valley?
into the water at the tip of the island's tail. Lost an eye. I once found this song verse among the captain's things. When I asked her about it, she told me she had spent time trying to decipher it, but her spyglass broke before she could. How unfortunate. I recall an island matching the song's description in one eye's direction far from my sea first. His eye fell to rings of land and water, landed with one eyes daughter, I'll hide it here in depths below, and keep my back to rival in the sky. An elusive story. The Isle of the Singer is a good place to start. Glimmer led the ancients to new land. He won't fail me either. Stone face in a tunnel beneath the waves on an island I've not seen on any map. What secrets do you hold? story. The Queen Clock. Along with the One-Eyed Spy. They would kill the teacher. And his two-legged pupil. I attacked under cover of night. But Warmonger was ready and won the fight. He made a weapon of the victim's tooth. And went to hunt a bigger foe.
No, where such leave those ephemeris charts? Hmm. Oh, it's you. My spyglass. Oh, a fine keepsake. I'll pass along that pretty gem of yours in return. The old Suds won't forget. Doesn't want the glowing eyes man angry at him. Oh, no, no, no. So many secret stars. Huh. Declination 22. Need to call him in. Uh. myself, out here all alone, with no one to confide in but that beastly Humphrey. There's nothing I can do, you see. Not really. I'm no pirate. Not like my best friend Rose. She's amazing. I once saw her bite a rope clean in half, you know. She's so fierce. Unless she's with George. He's her fiancé now. And she sent me this beautiful diary, all about how they both met and fell in love. They've even asked me to officiate their wedding. It's such an honor. Except, you see, they were due to be married three days ago. But they never arrived, and I've been worried sick ever since. I just know something must be wrong. Olivia told me her compass helped you locate a skeleton lord. I I'm not as skilled with the ritual, but yes, perhaps the same magic might help locate Rose and George. Rose wrote about burying precious keepsakes in her diary. Find their chest of memories and bring me any mementos it leads you to. Please, hurry, I'm begging you. Pirates, please help me find my friends. Bring me their treasured mementos and we'll soon have them back. Olive. Always yours by Rose and George. This book tells our story from unsuspecting beginnings up to the day we are to be married. I can't wait for the rest of my life with you, your Rose. This is the first time I mention you. Hi Olive, I know it's been ages since I wrote to you, but you know what life is like at sea. We made it to Sailor's Bandit though. We had picked up a new crew member called George. He might not last long though, he's so quiet. We will see how he holds his drink tonight, which could be funny at least. Rose. Day 5. I nearly messed up again today. I fell for a trap on Cannon Cove. Ran straight towards it. That's when they ambushed me. Suddenly there she was with two swords drawn. One versus four. They never stood a chance. After it I called her Wild Rose. She didn't smile but she also didn't hit me. I think that means she likes it. Day 24. We saw familiar sails on the horizon again. Our old Captain Briggs is still sailing the high seas. I hope she's okay. Oh Olive, we are pursued by a captain who goes by the name Rook. Rumors on the wind claim she is a skeleton of fearsome power, bearer of a terrible curse. I can't think of anything worse, somebody trying to take me away from the sea. George came up with some drink for me. It was hot and tasted like spices. I'm so glad he stayed. He's a welcome distraction with his warm spirit and his tall tales. And then I fell asleep with my hat on his shoulder. How embarrassing. Raz. Day 36, we picked up a bounty from Olive today. She took me to one side and asked if I was sweet on Rose. I guess I hadn't thought about it before. I mean, she's been a close friend almost as long as I've known her. She certainly saved my skin a few times. Maybe I should sleep on it. Olive, he kissed me. We had just broken Captain Quickshot and we were stopping for supplies at the Lagoon of Whispers and he kissed me. I don't want to sleep. What if today was a dream? Day 56, we found an old chest buried in wet sand on Sea Dog's Rest. At the bottom, two halves of a pendant. They were clearly important to someone else once, but now they belong to us. One half each, so that even when we're apart, we are always together. Day 78. Rook and her ship are a dark presence on the seas. It feels like her sails are always on the horizon and the curse is always in the back of Rose's mind. Rose is brave, but she can't hide her fear from me. Freedom means everything to her. 
Hi Olive, George and I are taking some memories we care about and they all go in a chest we buried. It's hidden at the tip of Rapier K, Rose. Dear Olive, thank you so much for agreeing to perform our wedding. We've been practicing our dance at Wanderer's Refuge. George surprised me with a lovely music box, which makes it much easier to practice. See you soon, Wild Rose and George. Rose. She was following us again all day. I could see her sails on the horizon, just out of reach of the cannons. Coward. I knew I wanted this life, ever since I fell from my parents' sloop as a nipper and got saved by Captain Briggsy herself. She looked me up and down and said I was going to be the sort of pirate who never let danger scare her away. And thanks to her, I never have. But they all say it's still too dangerous to take on Rook. I guess to keep George happy, I will just keep writing my feelings down instead of wasting all our ammo. Ugh. I just wish things were simple again, like they were back at Cannon Cove. Rose. So we're at Cannon Curve and there's just gold sat there like a big dumb trap for idiots. Guess who runs right up to it and gets jumped by an enemy crew lying in wait? Yup! I had to fight all four of them by myself. Lucky I had George's sword and mine also. I was angry though so it was an easy fight. He never realised it was him I was mad at. Let's see if we can make it to Lone Cove without me strangling him. I say it's 50-50. Our memories. We should go back to these places and hide our mementos. Doing what I do best on an island north of our first bounty. Our first bounty. So, Olive, I know you gave us the bounty for Captain Quickshot. I never told you the full story. We wanted to stay hidden, so we quietly moored our ship at the bottom of this ladder. From the top, we snuck along a high cliff, keeping the sea to our left. Skeletons were guarding a torchlit path below. We sprang our attack in through the ravine. We got surrounded, so I fled to the top, holding them off with our backs against this big rock. I spied Quickshot in the distance and chased after him through two arches, and he was finally defeated beneath the tree by the sea. George, we have stopped to rest on our way to the Lagoon of Whispers, but the only whisper I can hear is echoes of the question. 
asked so plainly, the shock of it has completely dulled my senses, and I am still no closer to the answer. It's like that game where children pull petals off flowers one at a time. She loves me, she loves me not. Although it's more like, I love her, I love her not. I love her, I love her. I... Oh dear. George. Only the captain's cabin affords any measure of privacy on a galleon such as ours. I knew that if I were to act, it would have to be while we returned aboard our rowboat. I leaned closer. Rose tilted her head quizzically. With my heart in my mouth, I moved nearer still. My oars struck a sandbar just then. We touched, or rather collided. Rose's forehead, my now rather bloody nose. I am dismayed, but not defeated. Once Quickshot is returned to the soil and we reach Sailor's Bounty, I shall try my luck again. <sighs> Rose. Today has been one of the best days of my life and one of the funniest too. My side still hurts. George had been thinking, too much, about how to propose to me, where to take me, and how to stand, and what to say. Too bad he forgot to look where he was walking. He turned and said, Rose, will you marry ya? Ah! He fell into a tree and got stuck upside down, swinging all day. Until we chopped it down, anyway. <laughs> laughing again. But of course I said yes anyway, as if I could refuse my George after all of that. box Rose spoke of. And these must be George's secret cooking spices. I'm not as skilled at the right as Madame Olivia, but Rose is counting on me, so this has to work. I'll make it work. will lead the way towards Wild Rose and George, wherever they may be. Please do whatever it takes to get them home safely so they can finally have their wedding day. It was always you, George. That was why Rook was chasing us, to take you from me. I was so angry. I cut and stabbed and sliced because all I could think of was reaching you. If I had been careful, I might have heard her behind me. My pendant is glowing in my hand. It burns like ice and weighs more than a mountain. I know death, and this does not feel like death. Today was supposed to be our wedding day. Please will you forgive me? I hope you will be safe, George. I hope you escape. I love... Finally, I have you to myself. 
You could be a little nicer to me, given everything I've sacrificed. Time, money, skin. Grey Marrow doesn't give away his secrets easily, you know. Still, it was worth it. Finding that silly girl's spirit and watching the light. I can hear them crying out from the pendants. I've never seen a curse this powerful before. I, 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 I don't know what to do. Come on, Olive. Rose was always there for you, even if it meant she got hurt so you'd be okay. Well, you're grown up now. Your turn to take the blow. I thank you for all you've done for me. But whatever happens now, you must not interfere. There's one last ritual I can attempt. But it's forbidden, because, because few can take the pain. But even if I don't survive, Rose, well, she'd do the same for me. Together at last. They're free from Rook's curse. I don't think they'll be returning anytime soon. 
But they found one another. Thanks to you. They are eternally grateful. And so am I. But I'll make sure everyone in the Order knows what you did for two lost souls today. If anyone can make it to the shores of gold, it's you. Parrot. Looks like it's back to the stale bird seed for me. Truth be told, no one's seen the trap maker in ages. I did find these notes she left behind, though. Seems to me she was put to work designing traps for old Briggsy herself. Looks like she left a trail to follow that leads all the way to Briggsy's stash. Maybe you can use them to track it down. Squawk, just watch your step. The trap maker has a, a very particular sense of humor. Um, maybe come tell your old mate Salty if you find her, yeah? Not that it's partly his fault she was kidnapped or anything, you understand, but... Squawk! Squawk! Bye for now! The famed teller of stories, now herself tangled in a tale of woe. Through my art, I'll take my revenge. I'll carve my treachery with wood and harden my hate into iron as I build a cage for her shining stone. This stone has pierced too many hearts and stained souls with greed, so why do you seek it? If only you could see these seas as I do. Perhaps now, only now, can open your eyes to the truth and show you the path forwards. Seek the cave of bones on Plunder Valley. Deep it lies near bird of stone, stories told in lifeless bone. Even while being forced to work against my will, and don't think I don't know which bird brain is responsible, I still have my pride. As the greatest trap maker the Sea of Thieves has ever seen, I must devise something brilliant to protect an equally brilliant treasure. How then shall I prove the effectiveness of my creation? Why, by using a few greedy grog gold diggers as guinea pigs. I shall begin my experiments upon Discovery Ridge. A few barrels packed with gugos should entice pirates into my game. The Forsaken Captain points to fire and ash. Hand in hand, two lovers face their destiny. The rum runner led her drink to rest. The thief hides behind her mask of gold. Now you hold my special spyglass, a test, to see if you can be trusted with the stone I keep. 
Sail to Discovery Ridge, seek my treacherous work. Stand in place and drink in the view. Stone's location spoken to you? My first test relied on the curiosity of the participant. First, I primed the location with some supplies that might attract a passerby. Next, a simple wooden lever was placed by the barrels. When utilized, it would strike a flint and so ignite a hidden powder keg. I had rather assumed natural whimsy would see the lever pulled once spotted and took myself away to observe what came next. The first pirate to arrive promptly wrenched my lever from its housing and absconded with it. Nice hat stand, I heard him remark. Subterfuge best psychology when dealing with such avaricious crooks. I shall return to my workshop and to the drawing board. Ancient people praised the sea, in ships they used a fabled key. Traps and treasure. I craft the first part of the deal and she provides the rest. The stone you seek leads only to broken bones and crushing ruin. Fair warning given? Very well. Here is where it lies. Salvage and supplies steal my nerve, for golden greed I have to serve. If you really do seek the stone, you'll need to find the key to my workshop here on Discovery Ridge, though the door it opens lies elsewhere. Sailor's bounty, key goes deep, into caves where waters sleep. Also, I left a surprise for you. Plundered supplies help my plight, friends of the sea fill my sight.
Recently, I've been testing different kinds of blades to see which are the most useful for deterring intruders. I've had some success with sword traps, as they look fearsome and have excellent range. They're expensive to make, of course. Sword traps use shorter, duller metal blades and are definitely useful in confined spaces. Still, they lack a certain style. Or should I go back to the tried and tested wall of stakes? Though primitive, you can't argue with the classics. Decisions, decisions. Some experimentation with weight and counterweights have allowed me to devise a new trigger as well as protection for my workshop. Even working with wood, for metal is precious and in short supply, I can use the weight of any intruder to spring a nearby trap. As sensitive as these devices are, it is nearly impossible to disguise them entirely. Thus, they are best deployed in darker areas. Unfortunately, I have been unable to completely muffle the noise made by the mechanisms when someone blunders onto it. A cunning criminal with sharp ears might, I suppose, get enough warning to save their own skin. Regardless, I am making progress. The more time I spend with Briggsy, the more I wonder if all pirates are ultimately fated to be consumed by their own greed. Is endless pursuit of golden glitter, in and of itself, the greatest trap of all? As an experiment, I have decided to leave a trail that will lead me to the very treasure I had been commanded to protect. There will be devious clues, of course, ones that goad, deliberately mislead, and test the mettle of those who read them. One last game, then, when it takes all. Is there someone out there on the Sea of Thieves worthy of the stone? We shall see.
So brave to have ventured down into my workshop. I hope Briggs' friends went too rough with you. Seek the moon's markings to find the stone in its hidden vault on Crescent Island. I salute you, pirate, but heed this warning. Take it for the glory, never for the greed. I concede the game. I have no more tricks up my sleeve. Trap maker, eh? I never meant for her to come to any harm, I swear it. But I had no choice. Briggsy would have had me for supper if I hadn't. 
introduced them. And, and, I've been racked with guilt ever since she went missing. If I had feathers, they'd be molting. But now, you've inspired me to turn over a new leaf. I know I've been a bad egg, but it's time to mend my ways. And to show my appreciation, I'll deliver that gem of yours for only five... Uh, I mean, for free! Goodness of my heart and all that, you know? Now we're mates. <laughs> the desires of a dark and twisted mind. If it is not ended, calamity shall surely consume the sea of thieves. In life, I was entrusted with a great treasure, one that lifts the veil which hides the spirit world from living eyes. So precious was this artifact. and the blood of a forgotten past. Steal your nerve. Within this book of the dead, I chronicle those damned spirits who linger trapped in the living world. Use its writings to claim my treasure and put those lost souls to rest. Now go! First, seek my sarcophagus, for my greatest treasure still lies within. Book of the Unclaimed Dead. Lantern casts a light, light reveals knowledge, knowledge is power, power has its price. My last words, I sink my sloop at Marauder's Arch, for I have no more need of her. Wiping the blood from my brow as I scramble to my tomb, atop the highest peak I lie, staring at the branches overhead. The tree seems to near its life's end, how fitting we remain here, together. The poison goes down easy, as I had been promised. I am the ferryman, and my journey is only now beginning.
Wild Rose and George, 22 summers apiece, souls saved. Two young lovers pursued by a madness born from jealousy. Twin pendants, a symbol of their love, were turned against them, their spirits bound within. And yet, by a pirate's hand, the curse was broken. The fates command I should speak with them, judge whether they can help those whose souls yet linger at the southern sands of Old Faithful Isle. Though it will cost me greatly, it seems I must give them their chance. Dinger, 19 summers, soul marooned. This one died in terror, fleeing his fate. The sea, its more circle of jagged rocks below, provides no respite. He knows, as to his pursuers, that he is trapped. Pain, hot and wet, peppers his body, casting him into the air as his arms pinwheel helplessly. He flails, he falls. Fontaine, 24 summons, soul marooned. This one surrendered to his execution, which was as inevitable as it was merciless. His lips part, and he speaks a short prayer in his father's native tongue. Preservez nous de feu de l'enfer. The rest is lost upon the wind. Captain Slate, 63 summers, soul marooned. This one died in battle, I would expect no less. He alone dares to face his nemesis, blade biting blade. He faints, lunges, but he is too old now, too slow. Steel flashes forward, and he too is claimed. As cold fire consumes his soul, he can only hope she is safe. I made it, Dad. I know you told me my ratty old sloop couldn't make it safely through the wilds, but I'm here in one piece. And that's good. I mean, this island is one of the most haunted places there is. They definitely don't need my ghost here, too. I may not be much of a pirate, Dad, and you've never been afraid to say so, but tonight I'm going to finally do something right. My hands are shaking so much I can hardly write, but I've got to do this. I'm going to do this. Definitely not scared, and definitely going to do this. Definitely. Right now.
This is crazy. I've met a dozen pirates who claim this island is haunted. Were all of them just teasing me? Laughing at me? I can't accept that. I have to meet a ghost. Talk to it, maybe. Find out why they never came back aboard the Ferry of the Damned. I have to know that there's more, Dad. I have to prove it. I want to know, to make you believe, that someday we'll get to see Jill again. I've forgotten the sound of my own beautiful voice. Well, I'm not hanging around here. I'm off. The fog had already rolled in by the time I started hunting. You know how it muffles sound and makes everything strange? Well, of course, you know, Dad. You know everything. Anyway, my mind started playing tricks on me pretty much straight away. I got turned around and started climbing, trying to get out of the fog, groping blindly, hoping I didn't walk straight off a ledge. That's when my hand touched it. Polished burn, cold as ice and moist from the fog. I thought I'd be seized by skellies for sure. Lucky for me, the sun broke through just then. It was just a boring old Kraken skull, not anything supernatural. That Kraken skull gave me an idea. I decided that if I were a ghost, I'd take notice pretty quickly if someone messed with my remains. I went around the island, gathering up all the skulls I could find and piling them up. I found some candles too, which is good. If I do meet an angry ghost, I certainly don't want to do it in the dark. Also, now I can see to write down more of my adventure. Looks like a storm will be here by dawn. I miss the bed in my room, with all its familiar creaks. But I made a promise to myself, so...
I tried every trick I could think of to stay awake, but I nodded off upon this bridge amongst another group of skeletons. I dreamed there was a man standing over me, stern and smart. He reminded me a bit of that old Captain Jill used to idolize. It was like he was trying to say something, and then kaboom! Lightning strike. I woke up in such a panic. My foot got tangled in some ropes and I started screaming. I tugged as hard as I could, and all of the cages toppled off the bridge. Oops. I'm done. Dawn is here and I didn't see one single ghost. I'll leave my books behind in case someone else has better luck. I'm coming home now, Dad. Once again, I'm coming home and Jill isn't. Sorry. Is it over? Is my nightmare finally at an end? Oh, the sweet tranquility of death beckons at last.
freedom! It's been so long. I am in your debt, but for now, I must leave this wretched place. to see old Danger, have you? I'd be proud to sail alongside you. Beckons me onward. You've returned to my lantern and proven your mettle by freeing the spirits. But your fate is still tied to the morning star. Not only your crew, but to the vessel herself. The evil behind these binding curses is a powerful skeleton lord named Grey Marrow. Who seeks to claim the shores of gold for himself. He binds those who oppose him so that they may never return aboard my ferry and avenge themselves upon him. To find this Grey Marrow, who speaks to Shipwright and Dagatooth, she knows the whereabouts of the Morning Star.
What's your interest in that old book? Trust me, the ship it speaks of is too old and too well beached to salvage anything of value. Just a musty old wreck, full of rotting scraps and broken promises. All I was able to scavenge was the captain's final message. From what he says, it seems there was only one survivor, and no one's seen them in years. Wait, I recognize you. Word around here is you're going after the shores of gold, just like the crew of the Morning Star. You're a little late. Grey Marrow caught up with the Morning Star long ago and stole their Shroud Breaker piece for himself. Even if you knew where to find him, he'd never give it up without a fight. Take the book if you think it'd help you. But if you're planning to take on Grey Marrow, you should know that he's no ordinary skelly. He's got some nasty tricks up his sleeve. And plenty of friends, too. Well, I've said all I can. You can either take my advice or not, I suppose. Now leave me be. I've got a ship to finish. Ship Log, an account of the final battle of the Morning Star and her crew by Captain Eli Slate. If you are reading this, you have found the Morning Star, or what remains of her, beached at Baldacare. My crew have already abandoned ship, save for she who fell, or perhaps fled, overboard before battle began. Scattered throughout the ship are records of our final hours. If you likewise seek the Shroud Breaker, I implore you to recover them. They may prove vital to your success, or even your survival. Any hope that we might elude Grey Mara, our pursuer, was lost when we stumbled across a tattered and yellowing scroll, upon which our likenesses had been crudely sketched in char. Though the runes were unfamiliar, I have some small skill with ciphers. Soon I was able to comprehend a little of what I can only assume is some private skeletal tongue. It is a bounty. We are the quarry. Oddly, this made my decision easier. We might outrun one vessel, but never an armada. The tale of our Morning Star has reached its end. And now her crew must part ways, whatever is needed to survive. But perhaps that will buy us the time we need to escape him forever and prevent the Shroudbreaker Stone from falling into his hands. To be snared by Grey Marrow is a fate worse than death. Manual labour does not suit me. I, Fontaine, became a pirate so that I could avoid an honest day's work. Of course I had no one to help me because the little fool Jill had to go and fall overboard. I hope she gets bitten by a mermaid. I have no map so this note is to remind me where I buried the chest. It is hidden in the sand between a palm tree and a rock. It should be easy to find again for it fit quite snugly between the two. I will miss the admiring glances we got when dressed in our finest attire. Salve. Cargo manifest. Barrels abandoned with ship. Ropes abandoned with ship. Uniform, see note. Bananas take with crew. Grog abandoned with ship. Planks abandoned with ship. We've got to ditch our uniforms. Captain's orders. How are we meant to ask about Grey Marrow without him? They're too nice to burn. I've given them to Fontaine to bury on the island. West side should be best, where the sand's deepest. Dinger, quartermaster. My apology. I can't do this anymore. I'm so tired of waking up scared if I get to sleep at all. 
thinking that every creek is the rattle of burns. I have to get out. Ahead is the island. I can see the big boulder where Fontaine plans to hide our uniforms. Behind on the horizon, I can see him, his sails. I can't call out, can't even breathe. I have to get off the ship. The water is deep, dark, and safe. Wait for a mermaid. Here comes someone else. Someone safe. Please don't hate me. Jill. Know your enemy, Sun Tzu, the art of war. Who is Grey Marrow, the wretch that pursues us endlessly in our quest for the Shroudbreaker? Long ago, I crossed paths with a gaunt and pitiless fellow whose crew may as well have been his slaves. Can this be the same man, fallen victim to a curse that has hardened what little heart he once possessed? A man at the Georgian Kraken Tavern claims he can tell me more. Eli, payment received, thank you kindly. When one of your crew wants to chat about all things scaly, they'll find my tavern offers the warmest welcome on Sanctuary Outpost. Don't worry, I won't say a word to anyone unless they're in those handsome uniforms you're so proud of. Loose slips sink ships. On that note, that old drunk Jasper was running his mouth in here last night. Says he tried to join your crew, but you turned him away. He only went and blabbed about your voyage to Grey Marrow's goons. My other customers didn't take kindly to that. Not sure I'll be seeing Jasper for a while. Tracy. It seems that my suspicions were correct. The Skeleton Lord who now pursues us is a bitter rival from my past. I have met Gold Hoarders with skin like Midas' own, and they claim it to be a consequence of handling cursed coin. Can a healthy, flesh and blood man really be transformed in such a fashion as to command legions of the undead? On this strange, unknowable sea of thieves, it sometimes seems as though anything is possible. I shall consider the matter further as we make the cannon curve. What will it be? You know who I am? Mm -hmm. Ha! Well, the uniform's a bit of a giveaway. Eli always did like his crew dressed up smartly. <sighs> Your ship's famous in these parts. One of the first to reach the Sea of Thieves, wasn't she? It's a proud history. Of course, a famous pirate is always going to attract trouble. Some skellies actually came looking for you. This lucky Duke was for you. He was saw them off with the business end of a blunderbuss before they could start any trouble. Captain Slate sends his regards. And his coin. Don't worry, I've been asking all about Grey Marrow and his scales on Eli's behalf. Rumour has it they're after a gorgeous crystal skull buried out on an island somewhere. Ah. I don't know what they plan to do with it, but if you want to find Grey Marrow, I'd start by tracking down his gang. Ooh. I have it on good authority that they're digging out at Cannon Cove, and people know better than to lie to me. Where can I find Jasper? Oh, Jasper, what a silly little man. Yes, he was the one who rutted out you and your crew to Grey Marrow. We don't take kindly to that sort of thing around here, so a bunch of pirates persuaded him to leave the outpost. I wouldn't waste your time searching for him, though. He'll have gone to Grand now that the damage is done. If you ask me, the only way to sort this mess out is to stop Grey Marrow once and for all. <sighs> Tyler in the trinket shop can give you more info on that, if you can decipher what he's saying. No problem. Hmm. Do you recognize the uniform? Of course. I've got a memory like a steel trap I have. You're from that fancy galleon, the Moorhen. Hmm. Or was it the Maverick? No, the Morning Star. Slip of the tongue. No one else dresses so finely. I thought I was expecting you earlier, but you're here now, and that's what matters. Uh. I had heard you'd run into some trouble out there. Or am I thinking of somebody else? I'm here to collect what we pay for. Mm. Oh yes, and a very handsome sum it was too. I wrote down everything I learned for you. All official, like. Uh, I just seem to have misplaced my notebook. Not to worry though, it's all safely nudged in my noggin. Oh. You wanted to know about Commander Clay Sparrow, right? That the fellow? His thugs are after some old mug, apparently. 
Not sure why they're so thirsty, but they're still poking around Sinking Curve. That's the place, or my name's not Taylor. Uh, Tyler. Mm. Good meeting you. There are whispers, low and fearful, that Grey Marrow has begun to wield some fell powers of his own, to which he has found a way to maroon, for want of another term, the spirits of those he bests in battle. Souls imprisoned by such a curse can never find their way to the Fairy of the Damned, and remain lost. We sail at top speed to Sunken Grove, out in the wilds. I am taking night watch. I doubt that I could sleep tonight. Gripper, listen to your lord. I need to slumber while I sleep. You to bring me at the stony skull of that cursed rascal Douglas. If Captain Shaw can follow orders for once, I'll soon have the means to bring him back to us. Ah, shall be my resting spot, near the camp to the east, Lord Greymar. Captain Skull, from Skeleton Tree. Walk 
northeast. When camp face southeast. Face North Star, walk seven, dig. The more I learn about Grey Mara, the more certain I am that we must recover and reunite the Shroudbreaker's pieces. At this point, escaping into the Shroud may be our only means of escaping him. We need to rest. He requires none. Fontaine believes we should surrender the one Shroudbreaker fragment we do possess, and plead for clemency. I, however, fear it is far too late. This chase has become a matter of pride for Grey Mara, and he wishes us gone for good. A confrontation seems inevitable, yet still we flee, speeding to Marauder's Arch as our last supplies run dry. Sunk with this ship, I know. 
Last chance, Shaw. Bring me that cup. I'm not going to be roused till you and Gripa have both returned. I shall take my rest at twelve. Douglas knew the Morning Star's crew on sight. With his help, we'll finally hunt down the coward who escaped me, Lord Greymara. Chalice Resurrection. From South Beach boats face rising sun. Walk. When Krakenburn face North Star. Walk. When Tree face setting sun. Walk seven, dig. He has a weakness. At last, here at Marauder's Arch, I was able to seize orders scrolled by Greymara himself. By his own hand, I have learned that even Greymara must sometimes rest his wicked bones below the soil. If he could be taken by surprise, it might be possible to defeat him. But our food is gone, our cannons empty. Instead, we must limp back to Boulder K, beach our vessel in the shallows there, and make our final stand together. My crew are terrified, but we sail on. I could not be more proud, and can only hope that one day we shall be avenged. R shall be my resting spot, near the camp to the east. I shall take my rest at twelve. wretches and left you to rot. That curse should be unbreakable. That means you must be an imposter. I don't know why you wear the uniform of the Morning Star, but perhaps you'd like to suffer the same fate. Those cowards didn't deserve to reach the shores of gold. They were such worms. One of them jumped overboard the minute she laid eyes on me. <laughs> I'll cut you down just as easily. Except I think I'll take it nice and slow.
Is it true? Did you really destroy Greymarrow? Am I finally free of him? You have no idea how good it feels to hear that. The truth is, I went back to the Morning Star out of guilt, not out of greed. I was Jill, the one who jumped overboard rather than face Greymarrow. After that, I gave up my name and my old life to hide from him. I tell everyone I'm building a ship to fight a Kraken, but the truth is, it's so I could escape if he ever found me again. Still, I always wondered, could I have made a difference if I'd stayed and fought alongside the others? I'll always carry that regret, and maybe that's what I deserve. But I'll sleep a little easier now I know the others have been set free. You know, that uniform looks better on you than it ever did on me. I'm glad someone's picking up where we left off and aiming for the shores of gold. I'll clean up this piece and pass it along to you-know-who. But before you go sailing blindly into the Devil's Shroud, you should speak to the only pirate who ever used the Shroud Breaker and lived to tell the tale. You'll find her at Morrow's Peak. Good luck. a message from the Pirate Lord himself. Years ago, I used the Shroudbreaker and was the first to reach the Devil's Roar and founded this outpost. I gained a reputation for succeeding at the impossible, but not even I dared to try for the shores of gold. I must say, I'm impressed. Here's the Shroudbreaker, fully restored. Once it's aboard your ship, it should protect her long enough to reach your destination. Wander, of course, and, well, you might not live to regret it. There's a book for you, too, signed by the Pirate Lord. Whatever it may say, I'd advise you to read it carefully. When the greatest pirate who ever lived takes the trouble to write to you, it's got to be something worth taking to heart. As for me, all I can do is wish you luck. You're obviously brave and certainly talented, but nothing you've faced so far compares to the dangers ahead. There may not be any people living there, but that doesn't mean the shores of gold are deserted.
Dear Pirate, if you are reading this letter, you have battled overwhelming odds and restored the Shroudbreaker in your quest to reach Tribute Peak, the island you know as the Shores of Gold. It is time you learned the truth about your journey so that you may prepare for the many dangers that lie ahead. The Devil's Shroud moves like a great living beast, ebbing and flowing according to its moods. Once it briefly fell away from Tribute Peak, this granted passage to a man whose insatiable greed had poisoned his heart. What he found there transformed him forever. You alone now possess the means to reach the shores of gold and destroy the darkness that lurks at the island's heart. I have been able to recover a few scraps of knowledge penned by Briggsy herself. With them, I trust you'll be able to solve the island's many mysteries and open the path to its heart. Succeed in your quest, and songs of your adventure will fill every tavern on the Sea of Thieves for years to come. Fail, and you forfeit your soul, Pirate Lord. I did it. Wrecked my sloop, but oh well. Captain Briggsy, adventurer extraordinaire, standing on the shores of gold. Not even Morrow and her little alliance made it this far out. This island was clearly sacred to the ancients. I found a chamber on a path running off from the central peak. It's filled with a single monumental carving, although it looks like it's missing some of its medallions. I see it now. This whole island is like one giant compass. Huge rock spires in each direction hold secret vaults. Seems these four points hold missing pieces to the central chamber. Protected, obviously. Here's what I've worked out so far. Well, this is embarrassing. I'm normally a dab hand behind the wheel, and I don't make a habit of wrecking my ship halfway up the beach. Still, what matters is that I made it here. Another first for Captain Briggsy. I should plant a flag, but all I have is these journals. I'm kind of disappointed that the shores aren't really made of gold, but at least I won't go blind once the sun comes up. The shroud doesn't seem to cover the entire island, just wrap around it, I guess. That means it's safe to explore, and exploring I shall go.
exploring the vaults. Southern vault, close to where I left my sleep. This vault has seen better days. Glad I've been doodling in my notebook.
Eastern Vault. Far too easy for an adventurer like me. Had to get out of there when I saw one of his minions approaching. Northern vaults, always four of the same, but had to tread carefully.
This is a weird place. It looks like someone used powder kegs to blow their way down into whatever lies below this island. Maybe they managed it somehow, maybe not. Either way, the tunnel they left behind collapsed a long time ago. There has to be another way down. Ancient civilizations love putting secret passages in stuff. It's a well-known fact, ask anyone. Whatever it takes, I'm going to get down there. I want to see every last inch of this place before I leave. Western Vault. Up, down, and all around. The ancients have hidden secrets in their structures all over the island. Guess it's time to explore. Ah, it looks like I'm not the first to make it here after all. This stuff doesn't look ancient, just old, and I'm sure it was made by pirates. I guess the island slips out of the Devil's Shroud from time to time, and that's when others came. Maybe even Ramsay got here in the end. 
Well, not pointing sulking, I'm here now, and I bet I can find something they missed. A memento to help remember this place. And when I tell this story, maybe I'll conveniently forget to mention this little discovery. We'll make it our secret, okay? It's still night, but I just woke up sweating. My first really bad dream in years. Maybe if I read it out, I can sleep. I was back in the tavern at Golden Sands on the night Ramsey called Palais, trying to open one of those sealed chests. I couldn't pick the lock, couldn't force it. Then suddenly there's the key in my hand. I smirk and throw open the lid. Nothing there. Seriously. Nothing. Like looking into a chasm, a bottomless pit in a box. And suddenly I feel hands in my neck, shoving me. I think it's one of Ramsey's men, and now I'm inside the chest, falling, screaming out as the lid snaps shut overhead. Then I woke up. The compass surrendered its secrets, and I think I can spy a passage into the belly of the island. But how am I meant to sit on the throne of a toppled titan? Found an abandoned sloop. Somebody's been here. Just need to get the angle right and I can ascend to the throne.
You know how some people are good climbers? Well, I am a great climber. That's why I left this book up here as proof. Well, I say climb, I actually used a cannon from the wreck of my sloop. But if you're reading this, you must have had the same idea. This place has some amazing views, and I want to see them all. I do wish I had someone to talk to, though. I hope you're okay out there, Suds. Very much creeped out right now. Not that I'd ever admit it to anyone. I finally made it on top of the throne and inside. I hadn't gone far before I spotted a chest, one of the sealed ones people sometimes sell to the gold hoarders, but open. It looked just like the one from my dream, like exactly the same. It sounds stupid, but I didn't dare go near it in case I fell in. As if I needed more clues, I spotted the gold hoarder emblem on a door too. So, they've been here before, but why? I'm through the door, but that symbol again, even down here, can't just be a coincidence. I miss the sunlight, these tunnels seem to go on forever. What if this place is just one giant labyrinth? Cold, can't sleep, when I try, I feel like I'm being watched. Going crazy all alone down here, I swear I just heard laughter. I don't like trading companies, they were none when I first came to the Sea of Thieves, young and cocky as I was. I don't blame people for working with the gold hoarders though. If you find a chest you can't open, why not take it to them? Well, maybe because we should have been asking ourselves what did they do with the treasure afterwards when we've walked away. I think it comes here, I think it all comes here. That's why this place is called the Shores of Gold.
I've made a huge mistake. I only wanted a little thing, just to keep sick, something to prove I've been here. Just one little trinket from a treasure pile. I don't feel sick or cursed, I feel great. And that's bad, because I haven't slept or eaten in days. There's a different kind of feeling inside me now though. I don't like it, I don't understand it, but I know it's getting stronger.
He was waiting for me, just as I expected. I thought he'd attack, but he seemed to understand. He says I can't go back. I'll be an outcast, a target. I know he's right. If I agree to serve, he'll share a cure one day. He's probably lying, but what choice do I have? Briggsy died on this island, and I am all that's left. commanded to destroy the relic. He doesn't want pirates reaching here unexpectedly when he might be sleeping. I have disobeyed. If there really is a cure for what I am now, I might need the Shroud Breaker to find it, one day. Instead I'll hide the gems that seem to focus its power. I know plenty of old places to keep them safe from fleshy fingers. The Shroud Breaker can go back to sleep in its vault to recharge, and I'll start gathering treasures for him, as ordered. I'll be a slave, I'll be a villain, I'll be a monster. At least now I know what the feeling inside of me is. Shame.
Now this is what I like to see. A grand adventure, a fight to the death, and a great big pile of treasure. You'll have quite the tall tale to tell once you make it home. The trouble with being the Pirate Lord is that everybody tries to follow in your footsteps. Briggsy, Grey Marrow, the crew of the Morning Star. Why, I ask you. This place, this sea of thieves, is bigger and stranger than any of us know. I reckon you've learned as much or you wouldn't be standing here. There'll always be new stories to tell, riches to plunder, and monsters to chill the blood of anyone brave enough to seek them out. As for the Gold Hoarder, I doubt we've seen the last of him. It's never that easy to scrub away the stain greed leaves behind. Still, I'm sure he'll think twice before picking a fight with you again. For now, I'd leave the treasure be. Its power has claimed the hearts of too many pirates already. That skull should fetch a pretty penny with the Order of Souls, however, if you're so inclined. Whatever you choose, take care not to linger. For the Shroud Breaker's power is nearly consumed. I'll have my envoy return it to its resting place, ready for some other crew to test their metal. Perhaps we'll meet again over a grog or two. My door's always open to true pirate legends. Until then, farewell and remember, it's not about the gold. It's about the glory.
Hold just a moment. Let me look at you. Ah, yes. I recognize a fellow pirate when I see them. Allow me to introduce myself. Sir Arthur Pendragon, at your service. Captain of the Black Witch. Though, I'm afraid she and I have both seen better days. Once, I sailed the Sea of Thieves, laying trapped spirits to rest with my trusty blade. Until the day I crossed paths with a cadaverous captain named Grey Marrow, and he bound my soul to this portrait. I'd still be trapped in canvas if not for that strange fellow and his box of relics. Never did catch the man's name, but he knew just the magical mumbo-jumbo to set me loose. Now that I'm a free spirit, so to speak, I plan to make up for lost time and help other trapped souls across the Sea of Thieves. And thanks to your timely arrival, I finally have the means. This lantern's a gift from an old friend, but I can't even touch it as I am now. If you'll join me on my quest, then you can wield it in my stead. You do the searching, I'll do the saving. The chap with the box spoke of three captains, each cursed during battle with a ship named the Ashen Dragon. I jotted it all down in my old journal, so we'd best bring that along too. Don't worry about me. I know a few supernatural shortcuts. Just follow the lantern, retrieve the captain's skulls, and my sword of souls will do the rest. Let's go. Today is the fated day, the darkest of hours, on which we of the Ashen Dragon must set sail to fulfill our final duty. I am her captain. I alone remember the words of fleshkind, though I am as old as our ship. And yet, on this fated day, another commands me. He speaks little, save to explain the rites. The flames that perpetually wreathe our vessel seem to coil around him, as if longing for his touch. It seems our route is preordained, and takes in many past glories. First we shall sail to Chivalry Treat, blazing a path across the waves. Our precious cargo and its guard are below deck, in their rightful place. All that we are, all that we have accomplished, ends today. of Sir Arthur Pendragon, Captain of the Black Witch. Entry 1, the Black Witch is mine, bequeathed to me by her former captain, whose soul I saved from its eternal's torment. A fine reward, if I am any judge. I shall sail her out from Dragon Skull Isle and set a course for the Sea of Thieves. Grand adventures await me there, I have no doubt, and I wish to meet them head on. Entry 17, of all those I have encountered on my travels, few understand me better than the Order of Souls. They command my respect, and I have learned many of their arcane secrets. Today, Olivia surprised me with a gift, or a sort of soul, she called it. The touch of its blood can free any spirit from the bones that bind it. It seems I am to be the Order's champion of a sort. Entry 23, my new sword makes dealing with chattering cadavers mere child's play. Already I desire a greater challenge. That is why I am sailing in pursuit of the creature known as Greymarrow, a fearsome skeleton lord. Rumor has it that he too has an interest in the Order's secrets. He shall experience them firsthand as my blood splits his spirit from what remains of his cursed body. Entry... Eternity. An infinity of moments cursed in campus, or so it felt. Was I trapped for days? Years? I have no way to tell. It was the price I paid for my hubris. To be captured by Greymarrow, forced to explain the binding ritual, only to then become its next victim. The shame I feel is indescribable, as it's being trapped in this phantom-like state. 
I must atone, I will atone. The kindly stranger who freed me spoke of others whose spirits, like mine, have been trapped, imprisoned in their own decaying remnants. My lantern would guide me to them if I still had substance enough to carry it. While I consider my options, I shall make note of all the stranger told me. I must not fail those poor wretches as I failed myself. First lost soul, the Ashen Dragon, a ship of skeletons. Who? Captain's soul still trapped. Martha Jane, heading east from Shipwreck Bay, can use my lantern to search. Went down with ship. Must find skull. There are two others. For the first time since our mission began, our commander issued new orders. I did not dare to question them. Trirock Isle, Cinder Islet, Cursewater Shores. At his instruction, we sailed to each of them in turn, and I went ashore. There I buried three great treasures from our hold, relics that even our commander regarded with something approaching fear. I can only hope I have hidden his belongings well enough that they shall remain undisturbed. Even as he is now, I fear his wrath. Now we resume our charted course, passing Liar's backbone as we sail. I hope that this shall be our final diversion. We meet again! Now it's time! Captain Martha Jane. I can sense her soul swirling around in there. Let's see if my sword of souls can't bring an end to her torment. Ship of the damned, wreathed in hellfire. What impossible treasure must it contain? My crew and I sought to know the truth. 
For six nights, we sailed in pursuit of the Ashen Dragon. Countless times we thought we had lost the scent, only to spot her ominous flames on the horizon. On the third night, we encountered Captain Stone and his crew, who also meant to hoard the fire ship's secrets for themselves. Grudgingly, they accepted our offer of an alliance. Finally, we saw our chance and struck. It was the last mistake of our lives. Our lust for wealth had blinded us to the true nature of our prey. Skeletal pirates who burned as though the flames of Hades were consuming them before our eyes. Upon witnessing the horrors we now faced, Stone and his crew turned tail and ran. Our plans were in ruins even before the Ashen Dragon turned and unleashed its cannons upon us. We were boarded in great numbers as our hull was shattered by cannon fire. There was no time for repair, nor for escape, as our world broke apart around us. My last hope is that Stone's cowardice may, in some way, return to haunt him. I shall carry that hope with me as we sink into our graves. It seems this mysterious Captain Stone is our key to hunting the Ashen Dragon. I'll preserve Jane's memories in my journal. They might give us a clue as to where we should head next. Wretched pirates, they dared to interrupt our journey and try to scavenge from us. Now we must moor at Scorch Pass and make repairs. Two galleons approached at once as allies. Clearly they meant to surround us, though the heat of our flames kept them at bay. To my surprise, our commander stepped forward, moving with a swiftness I did not expect and burning white hot with righteous fury. So magnificent was he, one ship turned and fled. The other was ripped apart by our cannon fire even as our crew assailed theirs. To punish their insolence, our commander himself boarded their vessel, using his great power to curse the captain before hurling her into the hateful sea. The dying memories of Captain Martha Jane. Randall Stone has left us for dead, that coward. He was afraid of the ship of flames. As I breathe my last, I know now where he fled. He will be hiding where Fetcher Farley breathed his last, the place where we first found treasure together. I hope that every time he looks upon its shores he remembers me. The Ashen Dragon should be visible from this island.
with that skull. Bravo. Another trapped soul rescued from Purgatory's clutches. Allow my blade to do the honors. Yeah, yeah, I heard what you was calling me, Jane. Randall the Vandal ain't no coward, you savvy? But he ain't stupid, neither. That fight was a lost cause, and we both knew it. My ship may have been scuttled and me crew sent to the ferry, but I knew where the Ashen Dragon was heading next, and where I could lie in wait. Those red-hot skellies ain't half strong, though. A few good shots, but he just kept coming. I had to run, or I'd have been burned to cinders. Shame I didn't run faster. It is for the best, though. I know the truth about that ship. I know who's aboard her. And I know you'd have to fight through hell to reach him. Only one captain left to fight. I'll add Stone's information to my journal so we can learn where the Ashen Dragon was heading. We've come too far to lose her now. It was a risk, but I was right to take it. Our repairs had left us low on supplies, and I could not rule out the possibility of another attack. I do not know how the pirates divined our heading. Perhaps it was mere chance, and yet when I set foot on land, her captain was lying in wait. Had I sent my crew, they would likely be lying in pieces, but my bones were forged in fire. In moments, it was he who lay broken at my feet. As before, our commander banned the fool's spirit so that he could not return from the Sea of the Damned. He will plague us no longer. The final leg of our journey sees us past Flintlock Peninsula. Until then, I have had much to consider. Once our mission is complete, what will become of us? The dying memories of Captain Randall Stern. I was tracking where the Ashen Dragon was heading before I was ambushed. As the cold takes over me, I have so many unanswered questions. What prisoner was aboard? What was their name? Why were they taken? I tried to rescue them, and yet as the light fades from my eyes, I fear whoever was aboard may be lost forever. We can pick up the Ashen Dragon trail from here.
The deed is done. A great door protects the remains and will keep pirates and other intruders at bay. I have ensured it can only be opened from within. When the last of the rites has been completed, our commander bade us set course deep into the Devil's Shroud itself. I thought perhaps he meant for its tendril to destroy the Ashen Dragon as it has so many other ships, but he gave me one last order. Once he had spoken, the commander burned so fiercely that even the fog seemed afraid, and so her path was cleared. Such is the might of an Ashen Lord. He is not but dust now, his power expended. As ordered, we will pass through the Shroud and into hiding until we are needed once more. One day he shall summon us, and the world shall once again know the fury of the Ashen Dragon. seems clear. We must be getting close. Whoever this poor soul may be, the Ashen Dragon went to great lengths to hide them away. Stand back, and I'll release them from their prison. Thanks to your pathetic act of mercy, your soul. 
sword has set me free. The Ashen Dragon was never my prison. It was my funeral pyre. Crewed by those who were loyal to my cause, Ashen Lords, who still long for the thrill of battle and shall soon be. I was starting to think you wouldn't make it. These are dangerous times if the stories of pirates releasing Captain Flameheart are true. I know a few people who'd like a word with them about that. I mean, they used to say Flameheart lived for battle and bloodshed. Last time he was around, he nearly brought the Sea of Thieves to its knees. No one could stand up to him. Then one day, he simply disappeared. Still, not everyone's afraid. There are those of us, like Captain Pendragon, who are working to find Flameheart and stop him before he can regain his former strength. Since you're here, I assume that means we can count on you for your help. When we know more, we'll be in touch. In the meantime, do me a favor and take that journal back to Grace, would ya? She's always leaving it lying around. Is that my journal you're carrying? Don't tell me I left it behind again. Not that there's much in there. Just some notes of my time in the Devil's Roar and all the things I'd like to do to... Wait! Can you hear that? Something's coming. At last. Tallulah told me she'd send for pirates who wouldn't shy away from battle, and here you are. I need your help, and quickly. My crew are in danger. Aren't you Captain Pendragon? Last thing I heard, you didn't have a ship left, much less a crew. Oh, my friends and I parted ways long ago. But their personal effects were still aboard the Black Witch. Stitcher Jim must have taken them to use in his vile ritual. Did you say Stitcher Jim? Yes, the same wretch who freed me from my painting and deceived me into unleashing Flameheart. Not that I knew his name at the time, of course. They say he used to serve the Gold Hoarders, but it seems he's changed allegiance once again. Oh, trust me. I know who Stitcher Jim is. If he's working for Flameheart, we're all in trouble. Where is your crew now? Rumors say he confronted them with an armful of dark relics and bound their spirits into some kind of cursed chest. Madam Olivia believes he might try and use its power to summon an Ashen Lord to the Sea of Thieves. Ashen Lords? I've heard the stories, and those were bad enough. It seems Flameheart needs to rebuild his army and he's using my crew to do it. We must recover that chest from Stitcher Jim, whatever the cost. I've always used my journal to keep track of Jim's whereabouts. Take it with you and use it to hunt him down before it's too late.
The Journal of the Forsaken Shores Alliance and its betrayal by Stitcher Jim. Day one, the Forsaken Shores Alliance is formed. Today, Ruby, Fetcher, Jim, and I raised a grog before the Alliance set sail for uncharted waters beyond the Shroud. Day twelve, we've discovered something beyond the Shroud. A hot, hostile environment we've named the Devil's Roar. Jim found a box of wondrous secrets half buried in the hot sands. We've stored it aboard in our cabin for safekeeping. A hot and unrelenting land filled with peril and danger. Day 52, we've been betrayed, poisoned by the bite of a rat named Stitcher Jim. That box of secrets has corrupted him. I should have seen this coming. Ruby, fetch her. I pray for your safety. I'll begin searching for you and the Alliance the second I regain my strength. Day... I've wandered, lost and forgotten, for too long. I lost my ship today. It lies here, wrecked on this island. The last remnants of the Great Forsaken Shores Alliance in pieces. I'm forced to take refuge here. No longer alone. Morrow's Peak will stand as a monument to everything Ruby, Fetcher, and the Alliance endured at the hands of that snake, Stitcher Jim. A nightmare. I had the dream again. Back with Ruby, Fetcher, and the rest of the Alliance. All of us standing around that damn box. Only this time, it's not Jim that peeks inside. I'm the one lifting the lid. The box is empty. No, more than that. Where its bottom should be, there's a hole, like appearing into a great abyss. And inside that, flames. Endless searing flames. The price of greed. The snake shows his head. Got word last night that Stitcher Jim's been slithering around out in the wilds. Rumor has it that he's fallen in love. Impossible. That man only loves himself. If that snake is lurking anywhere, it'll be below the dirt and he's hide out on Liar's backburn. Maybe I'll send a few friends out there to find him. And maybe they'll be armed. If my hands was large enough, I'd wring Duke's neck. What does he think he's doing, paying pirates to steal back the things I stole? For now, though, I've got to cozy up to him and help him flog his junk crates. Make him think I've turned over a new leaf. As if. I mean, maybe we lost the dark relics we needed to resurrect you know who, but there's more than one way to pluck a parrot. Once I'm finished here, I'll head to the wreck of the Black Witch and scrounge around for a few leftovers. Even a lock of hair will do. Word is, its captain can't resist playing the hero with that magic sword of his. That means I've just got to point him to the right place. King. I serve my King Flameheart. All hail Captain Flameheart. Ritual. The ritual is ready, the Black Witch crew is sealed, King Flameheart's wishes will be served. Flame. The almighty flames will rise, the ritual shall be performed in King Flameheart's lair. Heart. You returned me from darkness, Wonder. my heart is yours, I will never leave your side. Lord. Our preparations are complete. The Ashen Lords will rise. King Flameheart's army shall return.
My hard work is almost complete. Got which crew slain, ready to deliver my master his first ashen wood. The ritual must be performed in Captain Flameheart's lair, deep within the heart of fire and the devil's thirst. Its entrance is hidden below the waves, but I can find it if I light the chalice overlooking the north beach. The Ashen Lords shall rise. All hail King Flameheart.
Jesus! Pendragon only went and really did it. We all saw Flameheart, larger than life, letting the whole Sea of Thieves know that he's back. Next thing I know, I'm sailing out so that I can swear my allegiance to him. Sorry, Rathburn, but Stitcher Jim's got a new master now. Being here in the Devil's Roar puts me dangerously close to Captain Sorrow, but so what? She'll get hers soon enough. The Master's plans will birth the first of his new Ashen Lords, and there'll be more where that came from. All loyal to him, to us. Everyone who ever did run by Stitcher Jim, Sorrow, the Bilderets, the Order of Souls, is about to be sorry. Very sorry indeed. I've been around a long time, but I've never seen a box like this one. I don't know where my beloved dug it up from, but it stinks like a crypt. I'm actually pretty nervous. Messing around with curses is all well and good if you're the Order of Souls, but it makes my teeth itch. What can I do though? Master needs souls to summon his Ashen Lord, and if I want to stay in his good books, I'm the man to find him. Sounds simple, but it ain't. Because to trap a soul in the chest, I first need something that belongs to him. Not to mention more of them dark relics. Lucky for me, that trip I took to the Black Witch has already given me everything I need. You won't last much longer!
Now I understand why they call it a chest of rage. I can hear the souls inside and they ain't stop yelling and screaming, not once. I says to him, it's nothing personal, just that I already had their belongings lying around from that pendragon business. Dunn was the easiest to find, snoring his head off at a sea purse with a splash tail in one hand and a drink in the other. He didn't even wake up. Cavendish was next. Her dad was the one whose soul got trapped on the Black Witch back in the day, so bad luck must ruin the family. Rodriguez put up a fight and nearly struck me. Too bad I'd already slipped something into her grug. Well, she doesn't need a stomach no more.
accept and you are still too slow.
death, and you are still too slow. I am run proper ragged. It's so hot down here I can hardly breathe. But guess who's got to make sure all the traps are working? I don't dare complain though. Rathburn could be scary, but most of the time it was like you weren't in the room. Only his gold matters. When the master speaks, it's like he knows what you're thinking. He's smart, scary smart, and he believes Pendragon will try to stop the ritual. Well, let him try, I say. No matter how many pirate pals he brings along, they'll never make it through to me in time. Speaking of time, I should head to the ritual chamber. All my hard work's finally about to pay off. Finally, Stitcher Jim gets what he deserves.
Take the chest if you still desire it. I have no further need of it now. I'm going to attempt to reverse the ritual. I can only hope there's something of my friends left to save. Reunited at last. You've demonstrated incredible bravery, and I'll make certain that everybody hears about it. In the meantime, you should get some rest. Stitcher Jim and his consort are still at large, and now that they've been exposed, there's no telling what their next move might be. Let's be sure nobody else falls into Flameheart's clutches, eh?